Hey, welcome to Gaming Without Parole. I'm uh, Mike Zeller, and across from me is Brian Paul. The ever illustrious. Yeah. <laughs> do Brian we have Paul. to switch the names now, too? I, I don't know. Who, who do you want to be? <laughs> I kind of thought that was my name, but. Oh, I, I, I thought <laughs> oh. I could be Mike and you could be Brian. Mm, I thought that's what you meant. Kind by of switching attached names. to Mike. Oh. Well, maybe it's time for a change. <laughs> Um, so it's it's been a while. Uh, been a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I I'll, sorry. That's fine. Um, we had we had wrapped up our last episode. Gosh, was it was it last September, October, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Be- uh, be- before the Christmas season. Yeah, before the Christmas season. Um, but we had said we would probably be back at some point, so here we are. We're uh, we're trying to restructure some things a little bit. We're gonna change the format around, mm-hmm. but uh, it's still gonna be yeah. <laughs> we're gonna shift slightly as we adjust our new camera positions, but uh, it's still gonna be the same gaming related nonsense that we we always talk about. Yeah, yeah. Maybe um, a little less nonsensical. Yeah, well, I, I think I think we talked about this a little bit. I think what gaming without parole was first was. For a while, it was you and me hanging out, talking about video games, giving us an excuse to hang out, really. Uh, and what it became was sort of like this crazy, over-the-top game show. <laughs> uh, and, and that, you know, of course, uh, we added we added Brett Zawilski, we added uh, Joby Nogueras, and uh, and those guys were great. Uh, but but what we did with that was we turned it into the Midnight Games cast. Uh, Joby's not part of it, but he, you may see him as a as a as a. Re- returning character at some point i was gonna say recurring character now a returning character makes him sound like a puppet yeah <laughs> um, and i like it's i like the word character too you didn't correct that you, he's a you, bit of a character he is a character um, yeah he's uh he's he doesn't live around here anymore uh but he well <laughs> his address is well <laughs> in, in no he and i and I'm, I'm using the wrong pronouns uh she oh yeah that's yeah, right transitioning that's right. uh is uh is definitely going to come back at some point and tell us how amazing Pokemon Go is when it finally comes out. <laughs> I can't out. wait. That's uh, going to be terrific. I don't think I've ever seen anyone so excited about a game as she is for that. Oh, eBay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a lot to talk about with eBay later. Okay. Yeah, right. definitely. But uh but but Mike, what's uh what, what do we do here? Uh Gaming well, without we're, yeah, <laughs> we're going to figure that out today, I and, think. And should this be number 1? I, I think I think we need to s- we should we should change it to the new gaming without parole, and then when everybody hates it, we just switch everything back to gaming without parole classic. Welcome to the new gaming without yeah. parole. Um, gaming without, this is like the Coca Cola syndrome. Exa- exactly. Yeah. Nice. That's now the great thing about what's going on here is that we think that this green screen won't be here when you're watching this. If all Fingers goes well, crossed. there'll be something very cool behind us. If it goes poorly. <laughs> There's just going to be a green screen for the whole first episode. Nice. I love the fact also that I sent you a text 10 minutes before you're supposed to be here saying, did I tell you not to wear anything green? <laughs> like as if... You know, I did almost put on a green shirt, but I'm glad I, I did not. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing the Louis C.K. black t-shirt jean thing today. Hey, it works. Yeah. It works. Yep. And it works well with the green screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a color that won't contrast too badly in that way. Yeah. Um, Do you have green eyes? No. Oh, good, because otherwise we'd be fucked. Your eyes would have <laughs> you just, video yeah, games you just running see, through. Like, yeah, Super Mario stuff. Brothers. That would be great. Oh, we should totally have video games in the. What a great idea. Oh, in here? Yeah. That that's part of the deal. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just going to be a fake fireplace setting. It's going to be also video game footage. Nice. Yeah. That's a good idea. The ideas are great. I don't. I don't know if they're going to be really fleshed out. Well, we'll find out. Okay. We're, we're, we'll. Mike, I missed this. <laughs> right. We we did this for such a long time. We did. Yeah. And, uh, it, it definitely. It definitely. My Sunday afternoons have felt a lot emptier. My Sunday mornings have felt much more restful. <laughs> These are the same times, by the way. Yeah. We're just we we assess time differently. We have little boxes around our heads. I know. It's following me back and forth. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So Mike, uh, what's going on? Well, <laughs> it's been so long. We I know. have so much to talk I, about. I know, I know. We could probably spend a whole episode just just going back and and uh, detailing everything. Although since I can't remember the exact time that we stopped our last episode, I don't know quite how far back to. It's been roughly a half a year. Okay, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. What have you been playing for the last half year? <laughs> oh, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> but of course. No, I gave up on that. Um, yeah, way, way too many games. Um, 
I have been getting into getting cheap PC games from good old games oh, in nice. the Humble Store. Okay. Uh, they've been having a lot of sales lately. I have continued to expand my uh, PlayStation 4 collection because everything's nice. so cheap now. Yeah. It, I, I got on board just at, at the right time. There's a ton of stuff that's very inexpensive. And even some of those uh, kind of new physical versions of old digital games. Yes. Uh, there's a bunch of them by, it seems like they're all coming out by the same company, so Desco. Yeah, that I they're think publishing I've seen them that. all. Yeah, I, I didn't silence my phone. <laughs> I I kind of like you having it on because it shows just how much buying games off of eBay has integrated into your life. It's just a constant string of of bids and auctions ending. Yeah, it's uh, that was an actual text. Oh, um, but and I actually is it Jovi? Oh, we're gonna have an edit here. Nope, no editing. <laughs> that, that requires work, and uh, I can just turn the phone off now. Um, the one that just showed up recently was uh, Zombie Vikings Zombie Viking. Attack, or yeah. what's it called? I think it's just called Zombie Vikings. Yeah. Uh, I have not played it yet. Mine's but still it, in the shrink wrap. <laughs> it's written by the guy who does the webcomic Saturday Morning Breakfast Serial. Wait, it's written by somebody? Yes, it, they, have, they have an actual writer, much like much like the, uh, the sci-fi slash uh, homophobic screed game Shadow Complex, which was written by Orson Scott Card. Oh, wait, Shadow Complex was written by Orson Scott Card? It was, yes. Really, I just started playing that recently. They have nice. Shadow Complex remastered on PS4 and Xbox One. Well, you can know that every dollar that you give to him goes to fight the scourge of homosexuality on our shores. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Orson sometimes, Scott. Vi- sometimes video games come at a cost. Yeah. That one took a little bit of my soul. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah you, you, you bought that for nine ninety nine and a, a, a snatch of dignity. Yeah. Speaking of snatch... Ooh. <laughs> no, that's that's a conversation later. We snatch her. Snatch her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What else you been playing? Wait, so like let's get let's stick with this this uh, building your PlayStation 4 collection conversation. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. curious. Like I, I was so excited when you got a PlayStation 4. I was pretty excited. And then I ended too. the podcast. <laughs> yeah. So I want to know what you've been playing on this on this futuristic machine of the future that's about to be outdated I in like know. four months. I know. Yeah, I've been hearing about their they're gonna do like a console upgrade or yeah, something, like, which that always goes very well. I, I do, you know, I hated the idea of it. I hate the idea of the PlayStation 4.5 slash Neo slash whatever they're calling it, and some things don't change. <laughs> um, and I kind of like the idea of it now. I'm sort of okay with it, as long as everything's compatible and, and the PlayStation 4 proper owners don't get screwed in the process, which I have a feeling might happen eventually. I think what's much more likely to happen is the early adopters of whatever this new thing is get screwed. I mean, you, they just won't be supported because it won't sell well. Yes. US Gamer did a great, great write-up about um, all the times that there's been like console iteration and how successful it's been. Yeah. And the short answer is not very. But when I was looking into this, I couldn't find another example of a console actually halfway through its life cycle or less increasing its horsepower like actually increasing like there's been hard drive increases yeah there's been maybe like cd uh drive you know uh, increases or something but as far as actual horsepower to actually have to make a game for something with different specs i couldn't find an example of that well i mean it is a little different in that way but i don't think it's too drastically different from like a cd add-on because you're giving 32x exactly yeah or a 32x which is the (laughs) The the 32x in a lot of ways, if you look at the history, was the death of Sega. Like it really, as a as a console manufacturer, yeah. it was just that final nail in the coffin, you know. And then they fumbled the Saturn, but the Saturn is kind of a great system. They just handled it really badly. And yeah. the Dreamcast, and then the Dreamcast, they did everything right, but it was too late. Too late. Yeah. Yeah. They lost all consumer confidence yes. in their products. Yeah. I still think the Dreamcast is one of the best systems oh, yeah. ever it's made. Oh yeah, it's a great machine. It's a real shame. But um, I, I think it's it's similar to that, or something like the the what's the, the HDD thing for the the uh, Nintendo sixty four, oh, or the yeah. disc system for the Famicom. It's that same kind of setup, which you know none of those the the disc system did okay yeah but none of those really added substantively. I mean, the only times it's really seemed to go well is with handhelds 
you know, something oh, like true. A, like a Game Boy versus a, you know the Game Boy Color versus you know the Game Boy. Um, you know, they had the Game Boy Advance, the Advance SP, the mm-hmm. the Pocket. You know, and now they're doing the new 3DS, which I hear is not doing well. I, how many games are there for it? Two Xenoblade and yeah. Oh, and uh, Hyrule Warriors. Uh, actually, which you can, I think you can play. You can, but it runs like garbage. Yeah. So it's, you might as well not play it. The uh, the thing that ch- that changes my thought process on all this that says it's different than a 32x or a Sega CD is the install base. There are 30 million PS4 owners out there, and it's selling better this year than it was last year. Like, so people are not losing interest in it. They're actually, everyone's jumping ship from, from Xbox camp. They are, they're at like 16 million or 18 million. Um, and what I think is really going to work in their favor if Sony does everything right is they take PlayStation 4 proper and they mark it wicked down, like really far down. Yeah. Like they have to be like, this is your budget model PlayStation 4. This is for people who don't have $400 spent on a console. They mark it at two hundred dollars, right? Even if they have to sell it at a loss, yeah. this new PlayStation Neo is your four hundred dollar premium system. Suddenly, everyone, everyone has a PlayStation Four. You get the people who who said it's too expensive, they have one. You get the people who need the newest best thing, sold, right? I've already decided that when Neo comes out, I'm I'm the early adopter. <laughs> I'm buying it, giving my old PlayStation Four to my dad. Oh, now. Nice. Another PlayStation 4 owner who's buying software. Yeah. Right? Sony wins on a lot of levels if they handle this properly. Yeah, I think I think the big thing really needs to be that they need to get software to support it because that's always what ends up being the problem is a lot of software manufacturers, especially nowadays where one bad game tanks your studio, right. you know, they they don't want to support something that doesn't seem like a surefire hit because I mean what you said about the install base that's that's true but in a way that could also be to its detriment because everybody's got a PS4 you have to come up with a reason for them yeah. to get this new thing but every game from October on if you trust the rumors every game from October on is going to support both systems that's Sony's rule. Okay. You have you have to hit on either on disc or download. Like obviously, Sony said nothing about this. There are an amazing number of rumors yeah. for something that hasn't been confirmed yet. That it has to support both from October on. And then if you want, if you want to like you know, uh, upraise your old game and do whatever you want to, then you can patch that in. But there will not be a lack of software that takes advantage of the new system. Yeah. You know, even if they even if they run exactly the same you know the same resolution the same (laughs) frame rates whatever all the new games are going to play on your new system and your old system so we'll see yeah it sounds like some developers are kind of pissed off about this i would imagine so yeah Yeah. i mean the indie studios are apparently not that pissed off because they say our games are already running yeah in you know 1080p at 60 frames a second because we're running super nintendo graphics on this thing uh so it won't be a big deal it's the triple a developers that are going to have the hardest time with it yeah yeah. Who also luckily had the manpower to do it. I didn't. I didn't mean for this to be part of be a conversation <laughs> that we were going to have. Um, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. It's um, supposed to be uh, the rumors say out by September, so we only have a few months to to wait and see. All right. It'll yeah. be it'll be interesting. Yeah. It'll be in, in an interesting holiday season, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what else have you been playing on this PlayStation Four of yours? <laughs> Well, I I finally wrapped up Fallout. I don't know if I had said that back way back in the day. I don't think so. Um, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, my like 250 hours in, I, I stopped probably like an hour from the end. Oh, uh, so. yeah. Well, the ending was not particularly exciting. I'm I'm curious to see if they when they're done with their DLC, if they add in some new kind of who did you end join? game content. Uh, I joined the Minutemen. You did. I did. I mean, I was working with the Railroad and the Brotherhood as well. It seems like there's a way you can finagle it where you can work with the Minuteman. The Railroad are pretty okay with that. The Brotherhood aren't happy, but they won't go hostile. Okay. And, yeah, the, the, the uh, Institute has a rough time of it, though. <laughs> I think I worked with the Minutemen for so long <laughs> that I 
didn't even want to consider any of my other options. And then the Institute story was like, I, I wasn't impressed with it. Yeah. But I was like, okay, this is the most different story of everybody's. Uh, and I and as soon as I joined up with them, I went and just started fucking killing everybody <laughs> and all the other groups. Uh, and that's sort of like probably where I lost interest. Because, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, things do get a lot less interesting once you've committed to one story, and it's like okay, everybody else is a bad guy now. Yeah. Um, although if you like, I said if you team up with it, it did seem like if you went with the institute, that was it. There was no that was really it. Yeah, but if you go with the other groups, you can sort of. You know, still maintain some degree of allegiance with the others. What's your feeling on Fallout 4 as a whole, um, and like compared to Fallout 3 especially? I thought it was a good entry point to the series for people who may have been a little intimidated by some of the other games. I mean, they they pared things down a little bit. I didn't mind having a slightly more scripted character. I mean, your your hero in Fallout 4 is definitely more of like the Commander Shepard type than the, say, like, blank slates that you play as in, like, Dragon Age or Baldur's Gate or that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't mind it. I guess I occasionally missed some of the autonomy. Um, I definitely missed the fact that you couldn't introduce yourself as Testicles anymore like you could in most of the other older Fallouts. That was a that was a sad loss to the <laughs> the series. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope they go back to yeah, your character having no story except for the one you've created for him. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely. I mean, I think that's what made New Vegas so great is that I mean, you were a real blank slate in that one. Fall even Fallout Three, you had a bit more baggage going in, but New Vegas. Um, you know, you, you you're probably more of a blank slate than even Fallout One and Two. I didn't like any of the building mechanics. I didn't like when they forced you to like set this up or build this or whatever. It's like uh, it's I like the idea, but the whole thing felt so clunky. Oh yes, I would assume that's the type of thing where if anybody is a big PC gamer, when they're hearing us talking about doing the buildings on a console, they're probably like, "Oh, what are you doing?" Because I, I bet it's way well. You got a keyboard and a mouse there. That's true. It kind of reminds me of how they took out the the uh, strategic angle for the battles in Dragon Age on the on consoles. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> Console gamers are dumb. I apparently. Yeah, that's that's a mentality that should have gone away a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've gone. I think I didn't like the fact that you couldn't just go pick a place out in the middle of the woods and, and start, just start building, building. Yeah. Right. It's, it, it seemed like they wanted to create this big open-ended thing, but then they limited it in so many ways, and and I also felt like. My, the people would complain about not having enough beds, and and I had like hundreds of beds just like lined up. The game, for everybody. yeah, the building mechanic was definitely the buggiest yeah. part of that game because yeah, you, you it seemed like it took a while for people to acknowledge some anything. of the developments. Anything and and there were I found that they buried it really well, but there's ways that you can go into the menus and like three or four levels in where you can see exactly what the issues are and what you need to do to get people happy and set up and stuff. Uh. Um, but even then there's still like bugs. Like you can have, you know, a hundred percent satisfaction in one area and people will still bitch about it. And it's just, it's things not meshing up. Yeah. I mean, there, there were a number of settlements that were just like, places out in the wilderness where you just clear out guys and you can start setting things up. It's true. Um, and my, my favorite was the one that's like right on the edge of a cliff and there's like not really anywhere to build. Like everything's all lumpy. There's like <laughs> big pits in the ground and like so you see you got like beds like hanging out of windows and stuff. <laughs> People are like constantly stumbling. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the Bethesda charm though. Yeah. Or so they call it. Yeah. Um. The uh what would get me quite a bit would be the, the just like the random alerts I said this town's being attacked and I'm like and? because nobody can really die no 
I mean, unless unless you shoot them, there yeah. was one time where. So one of the first, this is becoming the Fallout cast, yeah, well, and we were talking ahead of time about like we're gonna make this a little more retro. You know, we'll still talk about the new stuff, yeah. but this is definitely going work to work in progress. Yeah, I mean, I, that I'm should, sure it'll be fifty fifty. What work in progress? That should be our title. Yeah, yeah. work in progress. Ga- gaming without Pearl, but it's got like the, uh, the, <laughs> the those old yeah the construction thing. Yeah. You know, don't mind us. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be what's behind this the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we should have like construction workers and stuff going. Or like we're building a whole studio behind us. That'd be great. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know why this just happened, but I when you said that, I pictured firemen po- <laughs> posing for those shirtless calendars. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why when you said construction workers, I, the whole YMCA uh, village people thing. Gotcha. I guess it all just yeah, I gotcha. it's all stuck up there. And playing a lot of Harvester in the old brain. For yeah, some reason, it's still and, playing that. Oh no, no, no. Okay. Harvester was a long time ago. But yeah, one of the sections, and if you go to the fire department in Harvester, everyone is totally a gay stereotype, and they're like sketching this naked guy. All it's the th- yeah, really strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you you have to at one point in one of the later quests, you have to break into the fire station at night. And the naked guy is still just there, like he's under a under a tarp. If you take it down, he's like, put that back, and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> this is a strange game. It's yeah, Harvester is very bizarre, um, as as they described it in uh, Hardcore Gaming 101's Adventure Guide book. They said it's clearly supposed to be a satire, but of what? <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's exactly how I felt when I was done. Like this is making fun of something, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> Man, I need to read that book. You should. It's, it's great. It's been sitting on my I know. You bought forever. it right after I talked about it. Yep. That happens about a lot of things. Mike Zeller talks, Brian buys. <laughs> uh, very strange relationship. It is. Uh, I also played all the way through Bloodborne with my my soul my <laughs> my Souls game companion, John. John. Yep. What's up, John? Yeah. He was he was very excited when we when we said we'd be that would be a big picture of John. <laughs> yeah, yeah we right should. <laughs> like, I feel like we'll be petting him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, that happens. So yeah, I played through Bloodborne. So I made it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just roughly say a third of the way through Bloodborne. What was the? I don't do know. You remember what you nope. remember. No idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I just I was constantly confused in that game. I think most people. I would say thing. yeah, those games kind of shoot for that. Um, like finding new areas, like without using a guide or anything, was really hard sometimes like you just you'd run around the same areas over and over and over yeah. and once you mastered that you're like where the hell am i supposed to go next and i and i after having done that like four or five times and slowly opening new areas and slowly figuring out like what everything how what how the game mechanics work um and starting to see things what, what was the uh the, the insight insight yes you start to see things that weren't there before and you're like this game's really fucked up yeah oh yeah and i loved that but it just it demanded my whole life, and I didn't have that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm always essentially doing like combat tourism with those games with uh, with with John because he's usually played through them at least twice before I I, I jump in. Okay. So, you know, he's got everything memorized. Um, I definitely liked the vibe of Bloodborne the most of all the games. I, I, I really dug. I'm not that not that I disliked any of the Souls games, but I really liked that. Um, kind of HP Lovecraft mm-hmm. meets um, dark fantasy kind of kind of setting, um, and it, it's a different style with every you know. There's guns. Everyone's right. wearing a more like um, gothic. Yeah, thing. yeah, like, like werewolves and vampires. Yeah, like Victorian era clothing as yeah. opposed to you know armor and. So it really suited my needs in just in terms of aesthetics, yeah. uh, which allowed me to get way further into that than, say, Demon's Souls, which is the last yeah. Souls game I played. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody always says about those games, oh, they're so hard. Like, that's their reputation. These are the hardest games. You know, they'll break you. I've never really found that to be the case. I mean, they're, they're definitely exacting games. Like, they, you need to... Um, you need to develop a, a very specific set of skills, and they do come down hard on your mistakes. But I feel like once you've... They're, they're like old-school games. I mean, once you've played a level once or twice, you're going to burn through it. But the, I think but the reason people think they're hard is because you have to die a lot. Yeah. You have to learn from your mistakes. And 
I think any game where you die a lot and it forces you to die yeah. a lot, you could consider a hard game. But that's just part of the way this game plays. Yeah. And if people aren't used to it, they're like, it's a real hard game. Yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is that they, but they also bring up the like, oh, you die and you drop all your experience points. Then if you die again, they're gone for good. Yeah, don't do that. Well, yeah. But you, and, and you know, <laughs> you know what game has you lose all your experience points when you die? Like every other game. <laughs> See, that's what I, 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 but games have become so easy. They, they have, but yeah. I, I was playing, uh, I started up. Dark Souls 3, which I'll, I'll get into it at the end of the, the podcast. And, you know, I'd die and I'd drop my experience and I'd make my way back and I'd, you know, pick up, pick them up and etc. And then I was playing uh, Legend of Legacy, that uh, the 3DS game. It looks kind of like Bravely Default. It's... it's um, so it looks like an old school RPG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... In that, that it's actually really like a modern saga game. So your stat growth, your the moves that you learn, all kind of have a random element to it. I mean, it essentially works out the same as experience points, mm -hmm. but like maybe you'll gain a level when you get your first experience point, and then not again for a while. It, you know, it essentially works out the same way. But I had learned a bunch of moves, unlocked a few more abilities, randomly stumbled upon a boss, and died. Because, you know, an unescapable yeah. boss encounter was just out in the woods, killed me. That's all gone. Yeah. That was all gone. And I thought to myself, you know, the Souls games aren't really that <laughs> hard. Like, I would have at least one, at, at least with those games, they give you one more chance to sneak over, pick up everything you lost, and then crawl back to the, the checkpoint. But the whole reason that I brought this up is because I think Bloodborne's a hard game. Like, oh, you do? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, the others, I all feel like have a certain pacing and, and a deliberateness to them, but I think Bloodborne's pretty hard. I, that game felt harder than the others to me. For having not played Dark Souls 1 or 2, uh, I thought Bloodborne was a lot more, I'll say easier, slightly easier than Demon Souls, uh, but also more inviting. You know, mm. it invites new for new players to yeah. jump in. I think it was a lot easier for me to jump into Bloodborne than it was for Demon Souls. Yeah, I mean, there, there are definitely um, something that I I kind of didn't like about the game, but I understand why they they did it. Is pretty much every piece of equipment, every weapon, every suit of uh, armor that's not armor, but like clothing is viable. Like, there's not nothing really outclasses anything else. Yeah. It all just is kind of determined by your by your play style. Right. And I think in that way, you're right. It's a lot more inviting that way because, like, maybe you don't like using swords. Like, maybe you want distance, so you take a whip or a scythe or something, and those are not, like, better. You know, the, the sword is not better than the whip. Like, or maybe you like to get real close and you want some, like, knuckles, or, or my guy was using a very short-range mace. Yeah. Um, and it, be, it becomes a very different game depending on which weapon you choose. Absolutely, and there's, there's, um, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, that makes much more of a difference than like class or any of that stuff. It's really your your weapon, uh, and there's certainly certain bosses that are way way easier, you know, if you've got some distance. And there's others that like you need to just get up close. So depending upon your style, some are going to be harder than others. You're really making me want to play, go back and play more Bloodborne. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a. Was it was it worth the? Uh, I mean, to get to the end, was it worth the? Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, I liked, and I I actually felt like the ending made a lot more sense than some of the other Souls endings, despite the fact that it was very trippy and and weird. Uh, and the DLC was great, other than one boss, which was horrific and was probably about a quarter of the amount of total time that we spent on the game was just trying to kill this one boss. Yeah, the bosses were... Every time I encountered a new boss, like, I, like my stomach would start turning, I'd lose my breath, and I'd be like... And my hands would sweat, and I would die. <laughs> but that was great. It's like, I, that doesn't happen to me in any other game. Like, the, there's a real fear oh, yeah. to encountering a boss for the first time. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, except that I know I'm going to die. I, I got to learn as much as I can before I do that. Yeah, yeah. They're ha, playing a lot of those games now. 
I don't really. I, when I first started the first Dark Souls, I remember I was like super anxious all the time. Yeah. But now it's like it's nothing. But the bosses are still very tense, you know, because they they usually hit very very hard. The the Dark Soul uh, the Bloodborne bosses. One of the things that I didn't like is I I felt like a lot of them had moves that were functionally one hit kills. Okay. Um, which is a tough sell for me. You know, I I don't like something where you're going to be like you've never seen this before so it's probably going to hit you cuz you're not going to be able to interpret the tells mm-hmm. and you're just dead as soon as it does yeah it's kind of like uh fighting mike tyson yeah <laughs> yeah mike exactly tyson's punch out. yeah yeah did you see that they that they found a new secret yes i Ty- did see that well, i did see that which which fighter was that on um, it, it actually, I think it works on all of them. Really, There's, I, but the Just one that, that they one dude in the, like the background of the yeah they they um, the one that they were talking about was Bald Bull, who's yeah. like the hardest one of the hardest bosses. But they, I think. They've said basically for all of the bosses, there's a tell where if you attack right when this guy like takes a picture or opens his mouth or something yeah, like that, his head, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you do it right then, it's a one hit uh, kill awesome. for the boss. The game's been out for thirty years. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 The old Nintendo games were great for hiding those kinds of secrets. That... Yeah. Um, I can't believe anyone. I, well, I guess Nintendo Power um, was published by Nintendo. Essentially, right? yeah. It's like yeah. They, they had the, in, yeah. the uh, inside track for all that. Um, but if it wasn't for Nintendo Power, they would, we still wouldn't know things about the original Zelda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Or Castlevania or any of that shit. Right? Go into this corner and kneel down. What? <laughs> Why? Oh, because something happens. That's Fuck. that totally in Dark Souls 3. There's totally spots like that where you just like you do a specific gesture in a location and you get items and stuff. It's so like, random. Oh, Castlevania. <laughs> Um, so let's, let's, I, I just want to stay on this PlayStation 4 topic for a bit because okay. this is what this first episode is becoming. Yeah. We'll do two and all in one. Nice. We'll, we'll make today very, very useful. Okay. Productive, as nice. they say, uh, in the real world. Um, so, so, I mean, you had a lot of games to catch up on, right? Yeah, yeah. And so obviously Bloodborne you get caught up on. Yeah, I made it through most of, I, it actually, this Christmas... I think was probably the most childlike Christmas I've had since I was about ten. I'm just picturing you in a pile and like throwing games. It, that was pretty games. much what it was, you know. And every every year, you know, my parents will say, "Oh, what do you want to? What do you want for Christmas?" Or my brother will ask me, "Like, oh, what'd you like to get for Christmas?" And I'll mention, you know, like some clothes or stuff or something for the house. And I'll mention a couple video games or movies. Yeah. And usually, I'll get like one, maybe two. Somebody will get me a video game. This year, it was like. Every video game I wanted, I I received, and I was like, "Shit, and the, and I should have asked for some more." <laughs> and do you remember you saying that you, um, since since it was before Christmas that we stopped filming? Yeah, you had asked for a bunch of games, and then you kept seeing sales on. All I these know, games. Oh, it was killing me. Right, <laughs> it was killing me. Like, oh, why did I ask? This every, one's only fifteen dollars. Yeah, every, right everything. Now. Yeah, every single game that I asked for, uh, I think, was marked down to. 15 to 20 dollars yeah. uh, around christmas time and i was just like oh man i hope <laughs> i hope they're seeing these sales metal gear solid 5 and the witcher uh, are two games that uh had awesome sales before christmas i swear at one point each of them one was 25 and one was 30 dollars. yeah and they have not, they have yet to get back down yeah. to that price which i'm kind of shocked about yeah i figure at this point they'd be 20 bucks each yeah yeah I, I think they'll i think they'll get there oh they will um the other one was uh, Batman Arkham Knight. I played all the way through that. Yeah. You know, there were there were parts of that game that I thought this is awesome. Like this this is great. This is exactly why I love this series. It had a few moments that were just fantastic. That mm-hmm. were so great and awesome and just reminded me um, why I love that series so much. Because I, I, I was one of the ones that I was a big fan of Origins, even though that's kind of considered the the black sheep but i i think that's a, a great game too yeah. um there were other parts of arkham knight though that just felt so tired mm-hmm. and just like these this is clearly a studio that doesn't know what to do with this character in these settings anymore yeah. they're out of ideas but the company just keeps giving them money so they have to keep coming up with games i will say a couple great things about arkham city and that's the the city is Arkham Knight. 
Did I say Arkham City? Yes. Arkham Knight. Yeah. Jesus, they all sound the same. Um, Arkham City was great, but... Yeah, whoa, well, yeah. Arkham Knight, beautifully rendered Gotham City yeah. for the first time in these games. Yeah. Uh, like Arkham Asylum, you could see it from across the water. Yeah. Right? And I was like, that's kind of cheap. <laughs> and then Arkham City, it was like, well, it's you get a pretty, chunk of it. You get a chunk of it, but a small chunk, it felt like. Yeah. It always felt like a little confined, and like anytime you found a wall, you're like, what? This seems real weird. Like, yeah. And then, of course, and then there was no one on the street because it was like Christmas Eve or something. So. That was Origins, was Christmas. Oh, what, what was. They had already been. Um, what was the reason that there was no one on the street for. So, well, because City, it was, the, it was the prison. They had just blocked off a right, chunk of the city. Right, yeah. right. That's, and, which, again, the, the false walls and stuff yeah. um so and then yeah and then christmas eve so even though like there were decent areas of, of the city to explore it always felt like real vacant yeah arkham knight is a beautiful beautiful gotham city you, you and to get from one point to another you can jump in the car with a yeah. touch of a button and you can race across the city in the frame right i mean yeah uh, one of the very few times console gamers had the better deal than PC gamers. Uh, all the PC gamers, did they get their money back? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Real bad news. Like yeah. Patch after patch, and it was just glitchy and frame rate problems and yeah. everything. Uh, but we're flying through the city at like probably 30 frames a second. And yeah, like, oh yeah. Everything looked amazing. The weather effects were great. And it was just fun to drive until you had to chase somebody, until you had to use the car as a tank and like blow up other tanks. All these great ideas just kind of fell apart if it wasn't for the game that game would be amazing <laughs> yeah the the car stuff and it, it's funny because you're right the, the actual handling of the car the driving of the car was very smooth but the the parts where you have to fight the other tanks fun, just fun at first the, yeah and and they weren't even towards the end they weren't terrible but they just they didn't feel like Batman. It felt like this is from a different game, and yeah. they just needed to fill it. The stealth stuff, the stealth car missions were atrocious. I don't even know if I did any stealth car missions. I, well, I fell off. I fell off real early with. They uh, were terrible. The, towards the end of the game, uh, the tank parts um, they start. Un unleashing these tanks into the city mm -hmm. uh, that are basically like Metal Gear Solid guards. They see you, and as soon as they see you, they just shoot the shit out of you. Okay. And there's and you you die very quickly, you know, whether you're in a car or not. And so you have to sneak up behind them, and they have like the little like weak point on the back, like uh, what was that? What was that game? Beyond Good and Evil, where the guards have the like air tank. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> they have the air tanks that you hit and like they just go flying off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like they got this little tiny weak point. So you're like you're in the freaking Batmobile and you're like sneaking around. It in just, a Batmobile. Yeah. It just felt so stupid. And I think and I towards hit, the, I hit one of those sections and didn't know what to do. Yeah. You sneak up behind the car, the tanks, and shoot them. And every boss and and that's what was so terrible. The the other Batman games had some pretty cool boss fights like Solomon Grundy um, the, the, the Clayface fight mm -hmm. uh, Ra's al Ghul like, they had some really really uh, even like even some of the, the like Firefly and um, what's his name oh uh, Deathstroke those were like those were great fights in the other game um, like every boss fight in Arkham Knight became a stealth tank mission <laughs> They'd just be like, "Oh, you found me, Batman! Time to climb into my stealth tank uh, with and release all my drones." That and sounds exhausting. I know, and it was just so crappy. Like there was one guy that I'm, I was waiting, waiting. As soon as I figured out he was in the game, I was like, "Well, at least that's going to be a fun ba a boss fight." Yeah. Nope. Um, I love things like Man Bat. Yes, man bat that was, was a, a shining light in this game. Yes, man bat was like that. That's the the thing that I keep thinking. These, these games are so great. Why couldn't they have done more stuff like that? Yep. Or even the the you probably didn't finish it, but the murder oh. quest where you find the people murdered and, and you, you hear the opera music. Yes. and then that's kind of your clue yeah. to look around. And, yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yep. Like that had a great. There was a, a pretty decent boss fight at the end of that quest. Oh yeah, didn't yeah. make it there. Uh, well, I'm, so I'm not giving any spoilers because yeah. Um, someday you will. You should have played it by now. Yeah. Or you're like me and you're never gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll yeah. get around yeah. to it. Um, but that that was that stuff was great. Yeah. Um, 
but it just it, it felt at the end of the day, you know, it, it seems like they could probably keep releasing little DLC missions with like, hey, go after this Batman villain or go after this Bat. But as far as like core games, I I think they're done. I really hope they don't make another one of these. I hope they. What do you want Rocksteady to do next? I I would love to see them go for another superhero. Yeah. Like like do I I think a Superman game is just very hard. I I. No one's but, really done it well yet. Yeah yeah, but I would I would love to see like a. Uh, like a Justice League game or something, or they yeah. they could do like, I don't know, Wonder Woman or Cyborg or some of the other, or Aqu- even Aquaman. I want to give these guys a break. Well, yes, right? yes. I want them. I want them to do something that they want to do. Yeah. Like I, I can only it. right. I can only imagine that after all this time, you know, they're like, man, when we get to make our own game with our own hero, and yeah. our own, can't wait to tell this story. We don't have to get permission from <laughs> DC to do it. Like, and it sells like shit because nobody knows the character and they go out of business. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you heard like the, the recent rumors no. about, um, about Sucker Punch, the infamous guys? No. The, the rumor is that they're, they might be making, and this is, this is real rumor of a rumor, uh, they might be making a Spider-Man game exclusive to PlayStation 4. Okay. How weird would that be? Yeah. That's like the opposite direction, yeah. right? That's taking, it went from being having yeah. Cole McGrath and uh, whatever the infamous second son guy is to, uh, what the fuck is that guy's name? Peter Parker? No. Nope. Spider-Man? No, no, infamous second son. Oh, I don't know. Delson. <laughs> Delson? <laughs> I haven't played any of those games. Why not? I don't know. Oh, you should borrow second son. All right. Yeah, no, actually don't. Borrow, <laughs> borrow the first two games. Okay. Way better. Um, but that's going backwards, you know. Yeah. Taking, taking yeah. guys, that, and I th- and I think the problem is that Infamous never really sold very well. Um, so they're like, well, hey guys, why don't you work on something that will sell well, yeah. and then you know we'll show people what a great developer you are. Yeah, oh, that would be cool. You could. There, there's been a handful of decent Spider-Man games. I think you could like do by a really, Neversoft. Yeah, I think you could do a. I think you could do a really good Spider-Man game with a. Those with PlayStation, a new console. PlayStation One or PlayStation Two, like where, what I ones? Did you... I think they were original PlayStation games. Yeah, because they were all the movie based ones for like PS2, GameCube, Xbox era. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I ever played any of those. But they yeah. looked pretty slick. Yeah. Yeah, no, they have a pretty good reputation. Any more PlayStation 4 games you want to talk about before we wrap this episode up? <laughs> uh, no, I think... I, I mean, I've got a bunch more on the on the docket, but uh, I'll get to them eventually. Yeah, yeah those are the ones that I, I burned through. Yeah. I've, uh, I feel like I've played... I played so many games on PlayStation 4. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, Uncharted 4 is the current one. Uh, okay. And it is beautiful and boring. Is this the one where they all die from the fungus from the, That's the Last, last of, of Us? us. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, same world. Right? It is, it is. They, yeah. they left that newspaper in, so it's canon now. Yeah. Everybody in Uncharted dies from fungus plague. That would be phenomenal. And, and I hear that the ending of this game is great. And I will say that the story is phenomenal. You know, and get the voice actors, you know, Troy Baker and Nolan North, they're amazing. Uh, and when, when it's actual just, hey, story time, I love it. But when it's like, uh, okay, climb from this rock to this rock to this rock to this rock to this rock, to this rock. I'm like mind numbingly boring. I'm like hanging from a cliff thousands of feet to me, and if I fall, I fall to my death. Bored out of my mind. Yeah. Something's wrong there, right? They yeah. just all all of this all this variety in the, in the environments, uh, but each environment you're stuck in for far too long. So there's a weird pacing issue. And, uh, and I will say that there's a pacing issue because I'm 15 hours through the game, which usually is the entire entirety of a Uncharted game. Yeah. Halfway through. <laughs> I'm halfway through. Yeah. So I will definitely finish that this week and report back, um, probably on the Gamescast. Hey, yeah, go watch the Midnight Gamescast. We do lots of things on this channel. We review games and we talk and we do stuff and we use green screens. It's going to be fun. So that's not your recommendation for the week then, Uncharted 4? It is, it is, and it's not. Like, I can't wait to get to the end of it to, to, to experience the full story. Yeah. But you have to be playing this game for the story. Yeah. And the action's fine, shooting guys, whatever. Uh, it's the best action sequences of all the games. But, yeah, just the climbing and exploration can, can get a little bit mind-numbing. So, not my recommendation for the week, no. No, I have played so many good games on PlayStation 4, though. I was like, it's, it's ridiculous. But for another time, right? Sounds good. Uh, 
and that's it. We've been dealt. Do you want me to give my recommendation for the week? No. Oh, right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. For the yes. Week. Yeah. We're this gonna. This our whole. I, totally I know. About it. <laughs> yeah, we we had to talk about this pod. This uh, this series like a month ago. Yeah. And we had all these ideas, and we have done none of them today. <laughs> yeah. We. Uh, I. Uh, well, in, in all fairness, um, I didn't do any preparation for this until nice. twenty minutes before you got here. Um, I was ironing. That's that's a that's a gaming without parole classic. Though. It is. It is. We have I've had months to think of how to perfect this podcast, and uh, I'm glad I didn't spend any time working <laughs> on it because I think this is going well. All right. So what is yeah? So we're gonna do recommendations. Yes, every I think week. that's yeah. Instead of instead of necessarily talking about like what have you been playing, we yeah. thought it would be better to just recommend uh, you know a good game because if we're playing something like a Fallout, that's gonna be what we're playing yeah. every week for months. <clears throat> um, so I want to recommend, since we're talking about PS4, I want to recommend Dark Souls 3. Um, I picked that up from work. <laughs> I didn't buy it. I don't, sure. I don't ever buy new games. Good for you. Um, I borrowed it from work, and uh, I've been playing it for the last couple weeks, and it's, it's great. It's really... Um, <clears throat> I feel like they've really got the formula worked out for these games at this point. It, uh, it feels very approachable. It's got a lot of little nods to longtime fans, but it's, I feel like it's not particularly intimidating for for new fans. I feel like the balance is really good. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of secrets, but there's a lot of stuff that you can just find by you know taking your time and going through the game. Um, yeah, it's 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 really great. It's uh, it's definitely the one that I've had the most fun with right out of the gate. I would say. All right. Well, I'm gonna do a little shameless self promotion for my plug <laughs> for my uh, for my recommendation. Your own game. Did I make a Brian, game? Brian Paul. Did I game. make a game? <laughs> it's so exciting. It's well, probably just like my real life. It's yeah, a little bit boring. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to talk on podcasts yeah. and, and wait tables and stuff. It feels sad. Um, uh, it's real lonely. That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> my recommendation for the week, since you went current gen, I'm going to go super retro. Okay. Um, on the PC Engine, the old Turbo Graphics in Japan, uh, one of my favorite games of all time, and since I'm promoting myself, go watch the review that's going to be up right around the same time as this. Uh, in in Japan, I believe it's pronounced uh, Gekisha Boy or Gekisha Boy, but it's Photograph Boy. Okay. Right? And so in every level, you control a guy with a camera, and you move him back and forth, and you're able to jump, but the screen scrolls automatically, pretty slowly. I don't know if I've ever heard of this game this before. This is my, one of my favorite games of all time. I would put it in my top ten favorite games of all time. Uh, this is, I think, the thing that got me into collecting Japanese uh, Turbo Graphics games. So when you're moving left and right, what you're really doing is moving a square around the screen as well as your character. Okay. And the square is what the guys take can take a picture of. So one of the buttons jumps and the other button takes a photograph. And weird things are happening all around you all the time. Like, in the background, you'll see a UFO go by, and you try to snap that real quick. Nice. But it goes by real fast, and if you snap it, you either get a bunch of points or more uh, more film for your camera. And getting more film is super essential, because the more crazy photographs you can take, there's a, there's a quota for each, uh, for each level. You're actually a professional photographer, and you have to report back to your boss, and he requires that you shoot a number of points in each level. Um, so there's, there's all sorts of weird things though. Like there's a guy like in a in a big red and big yellow trench coat who will flash you, and you and you have to and you have to you know take the picture at yeah. the right time. Um, there are like there are buildings in the background um, on fire with people jumping out of them <laughs> and guys with trampolines trying to catch them. Amazing. And there's all these different things you can take pictures of, and it is so addictive because the first time through any level you're going to fail yeah and then you're like wait i gotta remember that that ufo goes by just then or that this happens over here and i think there's like 10 levels there's so much so much variety in levels and it's just awesome it is one of my favorite games of all time photograph boy in uh well it is unfortunately one of the many many ex we have competition yeah <laughs> one, of, one of the many expensive games oh. um i believe at this point it's Easily over a hundred dollars for, for the uh, the Japanese import, which is, that's the only version you can get. But if you happen to have the game, go play it. If you, have, if you happen to be an emulator person and you like to play ROMs, um, you can definitely play it that way too. So, next week. Yes, <laughs> next which, next week. Right. We 
we like to wear these clothes. So yeah, oh yeah, you know they might smell a little worse. Well, and <laughs> in all fairness, I think all of our last episode, uh, all of our last run of the show, you have a black T-shirt on. So oh, is that really? Yeah, the case? I think so. Wow, I try to mix it up. Just uh, maybe, maybe dark gray sometimes. Yeah, not known for my my fashion sense. <laughs> um, next week we'll be talking a lot more about retro games. Yeah. and the high price of collecting. Yep. So if you're a collector, tune in. Mike, you're the host. Why, why you, I keep, <laughs> Clearly I, not. I keep forgetting this. It's <laughs> all right. Why don't you take it away? <laughs> all right. So I, I try to remember how you even wrap things up. Um, so for Gaming Without Parole, I'm Mike Zeller. And I'm Brian Paul. And we will see you next week. <laughs>